The Tempest Piano Sonata is a new beginning for Beethoven's piano sonatas. By that time, Beethoven had created a piano work that was not merely a piece with two themes and an elaboration full of arpeggio-like passages and scales. It is a kind of piece, a great character piece, that can include a whole world, elements of nature, dialogues, inner thoughts and feelings. It all could go in, and Beethoven had developed a very distinct way of expression. One can really separate the narration from the imaginary. It is really the beginning of the romantic sonata. The performer must tell a story. But do we know which story to tell? We don't. But it's not important. The important thing is knowing the composer's musical language to be able to understand some basic elements of the narration and set up our own story and project this story to the piece and tell it to our audience. He said that the first movement of the Tempest Sonata narrates Shakespeare's Tempest. Now we don't know if this is true or not. Supposedly Beethoven had told so in a conversation. However, this is unimportant. The important thing is that the Tempest of, by Shakespeare is a very good story to project to this sonata. The whole opening movement has many elements that depict water. It starts with a slow adagio introduction, like a theater's curtain going open. After a short introduction of a few bars, the first theme is introduced which is a melody accompanied by rapid small notes which are so fluid and vivid that make us think of the sea. The Tempest Sonata is a very theatrical piece. As it is often mentioned in the sources of the time, one should play not in a strict tempo but slightly moving the tempo forward or deaccelerating when necessary in order to make the piece live. And they also mentioned that the good pianist is not the pianist that can merely execute the rapid passages in a virtuoso way, but a pianist that can move the tempo and thus move the feelings of the audience. I get very sad and frustrated listening to many recordings of this piece in such a rigid manner that all the notes sound even and quantized in the strict sense of the word. Of course we should maintain a pulse, but the music should really move in order to live. Now going on in the sonata speaking about water. The second theme accompaniment is this passage. Which is really like the waves of a rough sea going up and down. And the melody above it goes up and down too as a boat that's floating on those waves, fighting with the waves, getting thrown here and there by the storm. So that's the effect of the boat in the storm. Now going on, after the repeat of the A section, after the repeat of the, after the reprise of the exposition, we come and as the, uh, as the elaboration begins, we come to a passage which repeats the slow opening chords but expanding them from low to high at the keyboard and passing from strange keys. It starts on the D major. goes to 
a diminished chord. And all very slow and pianissimo and it ends with a F sharp major chord which is very far from the previous keys we are. It is really a moment of transcendence and this is really Beethoven's way to signify the unreal, the imaginary, the inner thoughts and feelings of the character. And this is abruptly interrupted by this. And that's really like a storm, that's really like a thunder in the storm, cutting all this moment of transcendence. And it should be played like this, it should be played like this. Now, as we go further in the piece, we come uh, across this passage. <laughs> This is a sea that has become completely stormy and it's really literally boiling. And then it settles upon those long and strong solid chords as if we have come ashore. However, the recapitulation stumbles upon two unique passages, two recitativi. A recitativo is a vocal device. It is really a um, narrating passage which is used in the vocal music and it's the first time that Beethoven uses this in an instrumental work. He liked this effect because he used it again and again uh, in the opening movement of the Fifth Symphony, the oboe solo, in the Ninth Symphony before the singers come in, in the finale, and he uses it again in the great uh, Opus 110 sonata. Now, the instruction that we have been given by Czerny is that we should play this passage holding the pedal all through the passage and it should sound as if someone is chanting from far away which is this effect the first recitativo which is again interrupted by a fragment of the opening section of the piece and then we think that the recapitulation goes on But again, we stumble upon on the second recitativo. So now I'm holding the pedal throughout the passage. This is not possible to do on a modern piano because we would get a very muddy sound, full of too many harmonics and dissonance. So, uh, there I suggest to subtly change the pedal here and there and even hold down some notes to create this effect. On the fortepiano this is perfectly doable because the instrument can support this kind of open strings throughout the passage. So, going on, this moment of uh, transcendence 
gets interrupted again by reality, which is harsh and unpleasant. And so on. So this is really what Beethoven's what Be Beethoven does to switch between the inner thoughts and feelings and the narration of the story, so the reality. I love the way he's doing it. He's doing it also a lot in the first movement of the fourth concerto, fourth piano concerto, which is really a great, great piece. It's maybe the most beautiful piano concerto ever. And there's also a story that this concerto is uh, telling the story of um, Orfeo coming uh, from the underworld and losing uh, Eurydice again for a second time. This is also not confirmed, but it's the same story there. I mean, it's great to have a good story to um, put on the piece and, and project to the music so we can narrate the music more effectively. So finally, as we go through the recapitulation and we reach the end of the piece, Czerny gives a remark and says, the last fast eighth notes of the left hand should be played as distant thunders. He's talking about these notes here. He wants this to sound as a distant thunder, as the roar of a distant thunder. So there's the storm, the tempest, again coming into the context. I'm playing on the fortepiano because music is the art of sound and sound includes the timbre of the instrument as well. However, whatever we said in this video uh, can and must be applied on the modern piano as well. You can listen to the full performance of the whole first movement on my YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.